Well, hey, I'm ready. We're starting a brand new series today, and I hope you're ready for it. And uh, we're going to do a three-week series on something I would normally just preach on for one week, and uh, that's the idea of temptation. Anybody ever been faced with some temptation in their life? Nobody. You're already lying. It's the temptation to lie in church. If we were all honest, all of us have walked through, through you know, tempting moments. We've all had some temptation in front of us. Um, let, me, let me see if I can help you with it. Uh, a couple, uh, about two weeks ago, my little boy and I, we were heading to school, and um, we, were, we were heading by, uh, we were going on Shelbyville Road, heading by Academy Sports, and I was taking him to Panera to get him a green smoothie, because before school, it's one of his favorite things to have is a green smoothie, but the Krispy Kreme hot light was on. And he said, Daddy, let's get a donut. And I was like, oh, all right, let's go. So we go in and <laughs> we go, go to get a donut. And he gets a sprinkled donut. And he's like, Daddy, you should get one of the hot ones. I was like, all right, buddy, sure. So I get one of the hot donuts. And uh, it's so tempting, right? I mean, it's hard to pass up a hot donut. And so I get one of the hot donuts. And I sit there and I eat it. And then immediately after I ate the donut, guess what I remembered? You're the pastor of the church and we're fasting right now. <laughs> Had no idea, didn't even think about it, but the temptation was so strong to pull into the red light Krispy Kreme donut, it shut my brain off. I didn't even realize there was a moment there and I botched it and so immediately guilt hit me and I thought, don't ever let the church know that. And so today's my moment of confession. It's good for the souls. If you confess your sins one to another, you should be healed and forgiven. And so in Jesus' name, heal me and forgive me. But today I do want to talk about temptation, and uh, so we'll spend about three weeks talking about that. But temptation is something that all of us have walked through. In fact, if we were to go around the room, there are some of you that you're in bondage. You've been living your life in the bondage that you're living with. You've been carrying it for weeks, maybe months, maybe years. Maybe it's that one thing in your life. That one thing that you think, you know what, I'll just never overcome that thing. I'm never going to beat that, whatever that is. And for some of you, it's, it's you know, uh, I mean, honestly, without even naming it, I can just go around the room and some of you guys would say it's this or this. For some of you, it's very similar. If you look around you, we all probably face some similar temptations, but there may be something unique to your past or unique to your situation. It's just like this one thing that just seems to get your lunch. And here's my prayer over the next three weeks, that whatever that one thing is, that thing that you've been carrying on to, that thing that, that you would never tell anyone, that thing that you've been keeping close to your chest, maybe that thing that everybody knows, but you don't wanna admit that you know it's a problem. My prayer is that one thing that you never thought you could overcome, you would get set free from. Over the next three weeks, something you've been carrying that's been a part of your life, you can let it go that there would be something that has been holding on to you that no longer will have a hold of you. And so when we launched a couple years ago, Pastor Daniel bought me these boots and he said, those are your devil stomping boots. And so I wore them today and I thought, you know, I'm gonna wear them all three services because they got a big old heel on them and we are gonna stomp on the devil and say, no more. You cannot have me. You cannot have this part of my life. You cannot have this temptation anymore. And so that's my prayer today. And some of you, you're clapping because you want to get free. And some of you, you're facing a temptation. And the thought of clapping in that moment, you, your, your thought was, I I'm never going to be set free. Wow. See, all of us have temptations. Maybe it's, you know, temptations with food. And the hot light is on. And it's like you can never go by it. The idea of saying no to something pleasurable when it comes to eating, that's, that's a hard temptation for you. Maybe for you, there's a temptation where you're addicted to something. Maybe it's a painkiller. Maybe it started off with a back problem and, you know, the doctor prescribed you something and now it has become a habit and now you are addicted to painkillers and you think, I'll never get off of these. I, I need them. Maybe for you, you're addicted to alcohol. You just have to have it. I'm not saying alcohol is a sin, but if you go home and you have to have it to take the edge off every day, maybe there's an addiction there. Maybe for some of you, it's not alcohol, but it's sexual. Maybe there's a pornography addiction. Maybe there's a lust addiction. Maybe every time you see the opposite sex, your mind is fantasizing. Maybe it's not a sexual addiction, but it's a spending. It's a spending issue. You just want to spend more and more and more, and you get in debt over debt over debt. Maybe it's lying. Maybe you lie so much, you've, you, you don't even realize when you lie anymore. That like one lie leads to another lie, which leads to another lie. And you're like, did I lie about that? I don't even know. 
Maybe it's not lying. Maybe it's gambling. Maybe it's social media. Maybe social media is the thing that has tempted you and you can't even have a conversation. You can't go a night without that thing being in your face all night long. We all have things in our lives that will tempt us and addict us and all have things in our life that want to grab a hold of us. Things that we think, I don't know if I'll ever be able to overcome them. My prayer is that you would see with Christ, you can overcome them. That there is no temptation too strong for the power of Jesus Christ in your life. Let me give you a working definition real quick of temptation. Temptation is an attraction either from the outside or from outside oneself or from within oneself to act contrary to the commandments or the word of God. Let me dumb it down to something a little simpler here. Temptation promises fulfillment. It promises satisfaction at the cost of obedience. See, maybe you've been there, right? There, there's been a moment and it promises satisfaction, but then you get the hit, you get the high, you get the one night, and then the next day you wake up feeling guilty. You wake up feeling full of shame. We've all been there. We've all had things that we've done that promise something in a moment. It was almost like our brain shut off. And then the next minute, you're filled with guilt. I was doing some reading, and I'm not a neuroscientist uh, by any means. I'm a pastor. But there's a part of our brain, the basal forebrain, that has, 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 has something called accumbens. And, and, and these accumbens can, can be this thing that is a, a um, what, what Google said, is a reward circuit in our head. And this reward circuit in our head releases dopamine, and dopamine is that hit that we get, and then we have that crash later on. And what's very fascinating when it comes to these temptations in our lives are these things that we desire and pleasure and things that maybe we feel like we really need. I mean, this can happen even with vacation. They said this, that they're most active, the Cummins part of your brain, they're most active before not during the action. In other words, 100% of them are active while you're thinking about the vacation. But it said only about 10% of them are active while you're actually on the vacation, enjoying it. So 100% of your brain is thinking about the fulfillment or the satisfaction that a temptation can bring, and so it makes it really hard. And then when it actually comes, the cost of it, you realize that's why it literally feels like your brain just shut off in that moment. It's like, I don't know, I was fantasizing about it, I was thinking about it, and then when I did it, it's like I barely even realized I was doing it. It was like a part of me just kind of shut down. And so we have those temptation moments where it's like highs and lows and roller coasters, and then they fill us with guilt and shame and on and on and on. But I want to read a theme verse to us that I really feel like can set up our time together, and it's in Hebrews 2.18, and it'll be the theme verse for our entire series, but it's this, because he himself, and that is Jesus, suffered when he was tempted, guess what? He is able to help those who are being tempted. And so the title of our series over the next few weeks is this, that help is here. Because Jesus was tempted and he did not sin, but he understands temptation. He can empathize with your weakness. He can empathize with the temptation that you walk through. And guess what? Because of that, he offers help. And so no matter what temptation you feel like is too strong for God today, help is here. No matter what thing in your life that you feel like this is impossible to overcome, help is here. Help is here in that porn addiction. Help is here in that overeating. Help is here in the lying. Help is here in the anger. Help is here in those areas. With Jesus, help, help is possible. And so I want to give you four truths uh, today about temptation and just kind of set up uh, kind of where we're going in this series. And then next week, I want to talk about the process of temptation. How do you actually go from the thought in your head to actually acting on that, that thought? And so the Bible is really clear about the process of temptation and where it leads to in our life. And then the last week of the series in three weeks or two weeks from today, I want to talk about kind of the prescription to temptation. The thing that you can have operating on the inside of you that can help you in every single situation overcome that temptation. And so four truths, if you're taking notes, please write this down. I have a lot of scripture for you. And so I hope you'll take notes. Uh, note takers are just smarter, everybody. And so number one is this. It is not a sin to be tempted. Everyone is tempted. 
And so temptation is not a sin. What you choose to do with that temptation can lead to sin. And so all of us are tempted. Look at what the book of Hebrews says in Hebrews 4.15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. See, temptation and sin aren't the same thing. See, Jesus was tempted, but he didn't sin. And so it's not a sin to be tempted. You will all wake up and be tempted. Tomorrow morning, you're gonna wake up. And we live in 2023, everybody. There are temptations all around you. You will be tempted at school. You will be tempted at the office. You will be tempted as you scroll through social media. The temptations are real. And a lot of the things that we're tempted with, they're not unhealthy in nature. It's not unhealthy to want to be successful in life. It's not unhealthy to have this drive in you to be a sexual being or whatever. But what happens is sin distorts those things. And so you have a desire that God put in you, but then Satan distorted. And he said, I'm going to take the desires which in the hands of Christ are healthy, and I'm going to distort them. And he's been doing it since the very beginning. Since the very beginning of time, Satan has been trying to take a good thing and make it bad. To get you to operate outside of the will of God. And so it is not a sin to be tempted. Three things. Jesus empathizes with our struggles because he was tempted in every way. Now, the cool thing is he conquered the greatest temptations. He, he took upon all of them and conquered them through the cross. And Jesus was without sin even though he was tempted with sin. And so you have to know it is not a sin to be tempted. Let me, let me help you. Uh, let's, let's take the Krispy Kreme donut. So you're on a diet, you know, you're trying to do your best and you walk in to, to work and you walk by the break room and there's a whole plate of donuts in there. You decide you're gonna walk over to that plate of donuts and you look at them, you smell them and then you walk away. That was the temptation. Now, now, it is not a sin to walk by that and maybe look at that and experience it. What could have led to some sin in your life is what you choose to do with it in the moment. See, there are going to be times when you're driving down the car and you run by or drive, drive by, you know, shirtless guy running or, you know, biker short girl at the gym. It is not a sin to think, oh, that's a beautiful person, but it is a sin if you choose to dwell on that. It is a sin if you choose to take those actions and then begin to fantasize about them, begin to move towards those, begin to then have conversations with that. Is this just real life, everybody? And so you're not going to be able to avoid temptations. There's always going to be temptations out there. But what are you going to do with those temptations? Are you going to act on those thoughts? Are you going to take a step towards it? Next week, I'm going to talk about the process of it. Because it all starts with the thought. And it promises satisfaction, but the end, the Bible says, leads to death. And so being tempted isn't a sin. The second thing is this, you understanding that you are never above temptation. I love what 1 Corinthians 10, 12 says, and it says this. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful. Be careful you don't fall. Be careful, everybody. You're not above it. If you're in this room and you're thinking, man, I'm so glad my neighbor's here in this. This is for them. It's for you too. All of us can fall victim to it. All of us, given the right situation, the right opportunity, the right thing that we put ourselves into, the right environment, we too could fall into sin. That's why it's so important for you to recognize the temptation, for you to recognize what's happening and saying, okay, God, here it is in front of me. I will not trade what is permanent for what is temporary. And all the time we do that. All the time, if we're not careful and we don't give our temptations and our desires over to the Lord, we will trade permanent things in our lives for temporary moments of joy and satisfaction. I think that's why Jesus said in like red letters, watch and pray so that you will not fall into what? Temptation. 
Why? Because the spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak, everybody. You cannot fight temptation on your own. Your flesh is weak. There is a spirit, though, that comes on the inside of you when you give your life to Christ. It is awakened on the inside of you that wants to give you all of the power and everything you need to say no, to walk away, to turn and go in the other direction, to not give in to that thing. But your flesh is weak, and so you have to learn to give your temptations and your desires unto the Lord. The third thing about temptation is this. God isn't the source of temptation. See, God will test you, but he doesn't tempt you. What are tests for? Tests, um, they, they, they progress us, right? Think about a test in school. You take a test and it allows you to move forward in something. Like if you pass the test, you get to go on to the next grade. And so God will test us to move us forward. God will test us to advance us and to grow us. He never wants us to stay stagnant but he always wants us to grow, but he doesn't tempt you. See, Satan tempts you, and the reason why Satan tempts you is to move you backwards. See, God wants to test you to move you forward, and Satan comes along and tempts you to move you backwards. And then we live our lives stuck in this endless cycle, one step forward, one step back, another step back, one step forward. Anybody ever been there? You just feel like your life is a roller coaster of like temptation after temptation. And I moved a step forward and I took two steps back. I moved a step forward and I took another step back. And that's why you get in the situation you get in where you think this is just my lot in life. I'm never going to overcome this. I'm never going to beat this addiction. I'm never going to beat this thing that I'm struggling with. But you can but you have to recognize where temptation comes from. And it doesn't come, doesn't come from God. Look at what James says. Remember, when you are being tempted, do not say that God is tempting you. God is never tempted to do wrong. He's not. And so he doesn't tempt anyone else to do wrong. And so if the temptation in front of you is wrong, counter to God's word, it is not God putting it in front of you. And so what are the sources of temptation? What is working against you in that moment? What is the temptation coming at you? Well, three sources of temptation, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Satan is real. Let me give you some scripture around those. The world. In 1 John 2, 16, it says, For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh... The lust of the eyes, the pride of life, it comes not from God. It doesn't come from the Father, but it comes from the world. We live in a fallen and broken world. You are born into sin. It is why you need Jesus. And everything about this current world we live in, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, that does not come from our Father. And so the world is a source of temptation. It's out there for you every day. Every day there is something knocking at your doors, trying to get your eyes, trying to get your ears, trying to get your thoughts. And if it can change your thinking, it'll change your behaviors. The flesh is another one. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3 says, As for you, you were dead and your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, Satan, and the spirit who is now at work in those that are disobedient. And it goes on to say this, and all of us lived among them at one time. And so before you gave your life to Christ, before he made you new in him, it says all of you lived in the world. And not only were you in the world, but you were of the world. And being of the world, you lived in a way that you wanted to gratify the cravings of your flesh and follow its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. This is why, I mean, this is the gospel in so many ways. That we were, we were in the world and of the world, and Jesus came to give us a way out. Jesus came and said, through me, You can be a new creation, but we have to understand, I mean, if you don't understand that that the very core of who you are is a sinner, then we don't need a savior. 
And so Jesus had to come because there is a broken, fallen world and the flesh part of us is fallen as well. And so you've got the world, you've got the flesh, and then you've got the devil. Romans 7, 8. Um, I'm sorry, I think I got one more here. Let me read these two for you real quick, just so you could get those. Uh, Romans 7, 18 through 19. For I know that good does not dwell in me. That is my sinful nature. It says, for I have the desires to do what is good and carry it out. For I do, uh, I'm sorry, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good that I want to do, but the evil one uh, I do not want to do. This is what I keep doing. It's describing this tug of war of like, I know that there's good and I know that there's bad. And when I want to do good, I sometimes do bad. Anybody ever been there? You just struggle with this tug of war? James goes on to say this, temptation comes from our own desires, which what? They entice us and drag us away. You've got to understand this about your desires. They are the engine that drives your behavior. You have desires inside of you and your desires will either control you or you will control them. You will either control the desires within you and guess what? The Bible says that the heart is deceitful. The desires that are naturally born in you before you you become new in Christ are deceitful and evil. And they, they lean towards fleshly and worldly. You just have to know that about yourself. And so we've got, to, we've got to begin to give our desires over to God or they will control our behaviors. And so you will either control your desires or your desires will either control you. And then the last is this. So it's the world, the flesh, and then the devil Matthew 4, 1, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness and what? Tempted by the devil. So we have to realize, I think my mic, here it is. We have to realize that, that God is not our source of temptation. The world, the flesh, the devil. See, if God was our tempter, guess what? He wouldn't be our savior. See, when we realize that God is not our tempter, we can see him for who he really is. He is our savior. And so because of that, the fourth thing that you need to know about temptation is this. It's not a sin to be tempted. God isn't the source of temptation. You're not above temptation. And we realize that he's not our tempter. He's our savior. We can understand this about temptation, that because he's our savior, he can make a way of escape for you. There is a way out, everybody. There's a way out of the temptations that you face every day. I love this in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. Guys, you think what you've been facing is like only you're facing it. Only you struggle with that over and over and over. You want to tell yourself that you're a failure and you're a problem and, you know, this is my lot in life, but there is no temptation that is overtaking you or trying to overtake you that is not common to us all. But God is faithful. I can stop right there. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with temptation, he, I love this, he always provides the way of escape. The NIV says he always provides a way out. That you can also endure it. See, with Christ, there's a way out of every temptation that you're facing. Guys, this should be good news. If you walk out of here feeling beat up because you've given in to temptation, before you walk out, let me look at you in the eyes and tell you, the good news is there's a way out. There's a way of escape through Jesus. So you walked in and you're addicted to porn. There's a way out. You walked in and you're addicted to alcohol and lust and lying and gambling and anger. And there's a way out. 
You walked in and thought, I could never be free from that. There's a way out. See, every time you face temptation with God, there's an escape plan. I love what this pastor said, Pastor Craig Rochelle, about temptation. He said, every temptation is an invitation to depend on Christ. The enemy wants you to feel false guilt and shame. I'm tempted and I've given into it and so I'm bad. No, you're human. All of us struggle. But you got to understand you don't have to stay struggling. There's a way out. Every temptation is an invitation to depend on God. What are you facing today? It's an invitation to depend on God. Maybe you are addicted to painkillers. It's an invitation to begin to depend on God. Maybe you are struggling with some sort of vice. It's an invitation to depend on God. The next time you're alone in that hotel room and the channel flips and there's an opportunity, it's an invitation to depend on God. When that coworker walks into your office and they sit down, and there's a moment and there's a thought and you know you shouldn't have that conversation. It's an invitation to depend on God. God, I need you. Do not trade the ultimate for the temporary. May you walk out of here knowing this, that Christ, Christ in you, he is stronger than any wrong desire in you. So whatever you're facing today, because he himself suffered and was tempted, he's able to help those being tempted. Guys, help us here today. Help us here. Would you close your eyes all across this room? I understand messages like this can feel strong, but my heart was to help you. In fact, today, if you're feeling anything like shame or guilt, that is not of God. Our Heavenly Father wants to draw us to a place of of repentance, yes. Conviction is something that you feel where it says like, I know that that's not God's best for my life. But condemnation, shame, this thing that makes you feel like I suck, I'm never going to be enough, that is not of God today. And so, Father, I pray condemnation off of every person in this room. God, I pray if there's condemnation from Satan on any person today that's trying to make them say they're not enough, they'll never be enough, and fill them with shame and guilt. We just pray it off of them in Jesus' name. And then, Father, I pray it's your loving kindness that draws them today to conviction. That because of your great love, you would draw them to a place where they would know today that Christ in them is stronger. Man, what are you facing? Christ sends you stronger. Let me give you an opportunity right now to, to just think about whatever that thing is. Maybe you're good today. Maybe you walked in and you are facing something. Did you get it on the top of your mind? You've probably already been thinking about it. Now in your heart, Would you say this with me? Would you just say, Christ, be stronger than whatever that is. Christ, be stronger than alcohol. Christ, be stronger than addiction. Christ, be stronger than pornography. Christ, be stronger than that that thought of that affair that I think I've been toiling. Be stronger than it. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, may you set people free in this series. And what they felt would hold them bound and captive the rest of their life, 
May they find freedom over the next few weeks. If you're in here today and nobody looking around, maybe you've never given your life to Christ, the starting point to being able to to not let your desires get the best of you is to hand your life over to God. If your desires have been ruling your life and you've never let Jesus be the Lord of your life, I want to give you a moment to do so. Nobody's looking around. Nobody's going to call you out. I'm not going to make you stand up. But I do think that that you need something. You need something. You need like a line in the sand to say, Jesus, you're Lord of my life. We do that every week through the simple just acknowledgement of a raised hand. It does two things. It does something in your posture where you just say, okay, God, I'm surrendering. A raised hand is nothing but a surrender. And then the second thing it does is it gives me an opportunity to pray for you in this moment. Just pray that God would seal what he has begun. So if you've never made him the Lord of your life and you'd like to do that today with nobody looking around, I'd love to give you an opportunity to just raise up a hand and surrender to him. If that's you, go ahead and raise it up now. So awesome. It's amazing, buddy. Nobody looking around. You can put your hand down. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. God, as that young man surrenders to you. God, as he takes his life and makes it fully yours. I pray in Jesus' name, God, that he would experience the John 10 and 10 life, a life that is fully alive. Father, I pray that his best days would be ahead as he walks anew in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, everyone.